Are you tired of running out of things to say in conversations like this? So. So. Then you're in for a treat because today you're gonna learn how to have endless conversations with girls you like. I love drums. I never took drum lessons. Why? Limitations. We are addicted to our own limitations. How amazing is that? My name is Dave Parada and I put out new videos every week to help you get the girls you want and become the man you were meant to be. Now I know a lot of guys are afraid of having their conversations stall out. So today we're gonna get that handled. Let's get into the first point. Number one is to actively listen and relate. When you don't listen and you're only worried about what to say next, your conversations are gonna look like this. So what's your favorite kind of dog? Chihuahuas, they are so small and cute. And what do you do in Mexico? Oh, I'm a doctor. Oh cool, do you like it? Yeah. That's just boring interview mode. There's no flow and the conversation is gonna die out real fast. You gotta understand man, everything she says can be used as fodder for conversation so you want to listen carefully and use what she says to build a conversation. Here's an example of what that could look like. So what's your favorite kind of dog? Chihuahuas. They are so small and cute. <laughs> Chihuahuas are like the most Mexican dogs. Uh, what do they think are Mexican? You want to see the Taco Bell commercial? Come on, girl. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Ah, cabrón. Those aren't even real tacos. Alright, alright. What's your favorite kind of Mexico taco then? Boom! They went from dogs to Mexico to tacos to talking about what kind of food she really likes. It was a fun, playful conversation and it kept evolving. So listen to what she says and use that to keep things going. Number two is to turn off your filter. A lot of times guys filter themselves because they're not sure if it's the right thing to say in a given moment or if it's a funny joke or if it's too sexual or whatever. But when you filter yourself, it's gonna make things less fun, less natural, and it's also gonna be harder to connect and really flirt with the girl because you're holding back. So it's time to take that filter off and let that tsunami of words flow right out. Here's a fun example of me going unfiltered. Well, yo soy de Mexico, en mi corazón. Pero en verdad soy de Estados Unidos. Now listen, this is gonna get you in trouble sometimes. It's gonna me in trouble and gonna me in some awkward situations, but over time it's gonna help you to refine your sense of humor, be more comfortable making sexual innuendos, and overall help you to have more flirty conversations. It's also gonna help you to figure out where the line is so you can walk along it a little bit. But hey, if your girl gets mad at you, don't come over here blaming me. And by the way, man, if you want more tips for how to flirt with girls, then make sure to check out my free flirting video course. In it, you're gonna learn the exact things to say to flirt with girls and get dates. Just click the I in the top right corner or the link in the description to get instant access. Number three is to tell more stories. A lot of dudes make the mistake of just stating facts when they're talking to girls, but it's a lot better to tell stories. Stories are what connect us as human beings. They bring emotion into things and help us to be able to relate with each other. So when you tell some good stories, you can really hook a girl in. Now you don't need to be George R. R. Martin writing up Game of Thrones for this to work. All you need to know is how to get a girl excited to hear the story and then the basic format for telling it well. So how do you get her excited to hear the story before you tell it? Well, the best way to do it is to throw out a little hook and see if she bites. So what I mean by that is if she's talking about Japan, you can be like, oh man, I got a crazy story about Japan. And she's probably gonna be like, oh my God, what is it? Now you can reel her in even further by baiting her again with something like this. Well, Japan is like the last place I thought this would happen, but here it goes. You've now built a lot of anticipation for the story. She's excited to hear it, so now it's time to tell it. And you can do that through this simple three act structure. First off, the development. This is where you outline the characters and explain the situation. For example, so over the summer, I lived with my friends in Japan for a month. And one night, we went out to the club. And you know how it is, we were drinking, dancing, having a good time. But at one point, I wandered off to the smoking lounge in the back. And that's when some crazy shit happens. Second is the problem. This is the main conflict that the characters face. As I was walking through the door, there was this older Japanese guy standing like sort of in the door. So I tried to scoop by him, then this dude just shouldered me. 
I'm talking, this dude's trying to like pull some Mortal Kombat shit on me. Oh my god. I ain't gonna lie, I was a little drunk, so I was like, hell no. So I gave this dude a shoulder back, you know, a little konnichiwa, how you fucking doing? All of a sudden, this dude steps back, looks me up and down with the craziest eyes you've ever seen. I'm talking, this dude wanted to murder me. That's when I was like, oh shit, I screwed up. So what happened next? He rips his shirt off, his back is filled with tattoos, and he starts yelling, Yakuza! Yakuza! Then he just like squares me up. So I'm like, oh fuck, what did I get myself into? So I try to apologize to this dude. I'm like, oh, stupid American, very sorry. I try to like shake his hand and make amends. Dude is not having it. He doesn't speak any English. I'm looking over to the bouncer to try, you know, to get some help. And this dude is not on my side at all. So I'm in a pickle. If I try to fight this guy, we all might get killed by the Yakuza. But if I don't do anything, then this Yakuza guy might kill me. And finally, you got the solution. This is where you explain how it got solved and the main takeaway that you had. So this guy's reaching in his back pocket like he's about to pull that knife out or something. I'm like, oh shit. Then he pulls his hands out, puts his hands around my neck and tries to choke me out. That's insane. Meanwhile, my boy walks into the room He's got a beer bottle, and he sees what's happening. He's about to smash it over this guy's head. So, what'd you do? I know if he smashes the beer bottle over this guy's head, we all gonna die. We ain't making out of Japan alive. So, I push the Yakuza guy off me. He gets discombobulated for a second because he's all like crazy Japanese drunk. And then, I see him an opportunity because he's not really paying attention. I just bolt the fuck out of the room. I found my friends, I'm like, yo, we need to get the hell out of here. And yeah, that's how I survived the Yakuza attack. And I also learned that most Japanese people are pretty nice. So if you meet a guy who's like super aggressive, he's probably in the Yakuza and you probably shouldn't fuck with him. When you tell good stories, she's going to feel like she's connecting with you more and it's going to make you a more entertaining and interesting guy. Number four is to have backup questions. You want to have a few easy, open-ended backup questions to go to in case you run out of things to say. That way, you're not going to panic at the first sign of silence. So here are some simple, open-ended questions you can go to to keep it flirty, fun, and help you get to know her. What are you passionate about? If you could wake up anywhere in the world tomorrow, where would it be? What's one thing I wouldn't guess about you? What do you find sexiest in a guy? These are just some simple examples I like to use. You can feel free to slip them into your back pocket and use them as well. That way, as soon as you run out of things to say, you got a new question and boom, a new topic. Number five is to keep things moving. Conversations are kind of like bread. After a while, they go stale. Now, if you don't want to be chomping on some hard ass, crusty conversation, then the solution is to keep things moving. What I'm saying is don't just wait for the conversation to go stale and run dry. Lead her somewhere at a high point in the interaction. So you might be talking and laughing and boom. Say, hey, you wanna go hit the dance floor? Or hey, let's hit the bar for a drink. Or hey, let's get out of here. Hell, you can even go for the kiss and make a move. By doing this, you take pressure off of the conversation and you inject new, fresh environments and situations into the interaction. So instead of things getting stale and awkward and she walks away to go to the bathroom and never comes back again, you keep the fun going, you keep things moving up, and she's gonna be in love. This might be the most important point of this video, man. I see so many guys screw this up. They just wait and wait and wait and the girl walks away. You don't wanna be that guy. Keeping it moving is gonna make you stand out. It's gonna make you a better dude and it's gonna get you more girls. All right, man, these five things are gonna make it easy for you to have endless conversation with a girl. If you wanna know how to start a conversation with a girl, then check out this video right here. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Drop a comment too, I respond to everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace.